tonight's openings are accompanied by Infernal Fusion Machine Black Ale from Dastardly Villain Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as a fusion of a classic Irish dry stout and a North American stout with espresso flavors. Interested? Roasty malts? Yeah. If nothing else, these guys have some clever packaging and artwork. But the beer also looks really interesting as well. Yes, very interesting indeed. Let's see, what do we have for the first item? It says instrument lights. There's not many of them in there either. It's a pretty thin package. Oh, looks like there's about 10 of them. These appear to be um, automotive instrument panel LEDs to replace the little shove-in incandescent uh, lights that backlight the stuff on the dash of your car. So that's what I believe they are which means they are designed to be operated off 12 volts. The LED package itself is a 50-50 package, so five millimeters on each side. And I'm going to assume that if I open this up, I'm going to find some steering diodes so that it can be plugged in either way and a resistor. No, I am wrong. There is simply two resistors in there. Okay, so this is obviously a polarized device. But I'm still claiming that it's a 12 volt device. So with approximately 12 volts on the power supply, let's see what happens. Nope, doesn't light up that direction, so it is polarized, as I suspected. There we go. I would call that a cool white, maybe a bright white. Definitely not warm white, though. Now looking at the base here, it doesn't look like it's got anything to key it polarized, so you'd have to just plug it in and try it in your car, I guess. Either that, or these are just cheap knockoff ones that, uh, that I got cheap from China, which, of course, is what they are. Ten pieces, auto LED, lamp, car dashboard, instrument, white bulbs, interior trunk, SMD. Trunk light. That's an interesting application, I guess. I uh, got these at auction for buck seventy nine Canadian or dollar thirty five American, so you know seventeen or eighteen cents each for fifty fifty white LEDs. I think that's worth it just for that. Curious description, but the important part is that these fit the T five form factor for automotive LEDs. Again, not that that's why I got them, but. Uh, it just seemed like a, a cheap source of LEDs that aren't normally that cheap. All right, next thing in, it says, uh, what does it say? Closed synchronous belt. Oh, okay. I think I know what this is. Let's see if I can remember. Yeah, these are an assortment of uh, timing belts. This one is a 200 millimeter GT2 or GT6-2 something. I'm not 100% familiar with these things, but this is, I think, the type of timing belts that are used with 3D printers. But these ones specifically I got just to, to tinker with, to have an assortment um, so that I can do some experimenting with some stepper motors and some gearing and mechanical stuff. I am not at all very good with mechanical stuff and precision, things like that. So I thought I would get a small assortment of these. I can 3D print gears to go with them. I have a couple of gears that, that I got in the previous meal bag as well. And I've got a handful of uh, stepper motors kicking around here. So that should be interesting to experiment. I'm not sure, un until I have an actual direction in mind, I may not show you what I'm experimenting with, but uh, those will make an appearance at some point in the future. GT2 ring closed loop timing belt rubber 2GT 6mm 3D printer belts, parts, printer parts, etc. They have a variety of different sizes and I got one of each. Um, pricing anywhere from a buck 93 for the smallest one. No, nope, it wasn't even that. Dollar eighty-eight for the smallest one, up to two forty-one for the largest one. And again, just something to have to tinker with. You can, of course, get various different sizes of them from various different vendors, but at the time, this was the cheapest one I could find. 
All right, next thing in says audio transformer. Could be, could be. That is something that I've ordered. Yes, it is a bag of transformers. Uh, does it say on there? Yeah, it says 600 to 600, which I think is about right. So 600 ohms on each side. So it's just an isolation transformer. It's not uh, changing voltage levels or anything like that. It is simply maintaining impedance on both sides and isolating the circuit. 10 pieces, double wire winding audio transform, 600 to 600 ohm, Europe, one to one. Uh, sure, I don't know why, Europe. Isolation transformer, yes it is. $6.52 for the lot of 10 of them. Ooh, marked down from 9.59, cool. And there is the specs. Um, it says 800 turns on primary and 800 turns on secondary. So exactly the same amount on both sides. So that's exactly what you'd expect from a one-to-one -one, uh, transformer. I don't know. What else is there to say about them, really? Right. Next in is this little package, which calls itself Ring Dog LED. I'll give you a second to guess what that is. Is that what you guessed? This is a collar for my dog that claims to light up. I see it says it is size large, and that's good because my dog is size large. Oh, and it's even got one of those battery protector things in it, so it might come with a battery. Let's see what happens. Ooh, so it's blue illumination. It looks like it's just got one LED in here, which is shining down a kind of a light pipe sort of thing. You can kind of see it when it gets around to the other side a little bit. Not a huge amount. I thought this would be a useful thing to get now that the days are getting a little bit shorter. The evenings when I'm available to walk the dog are a little bit darker. So maybe this will be good to just keep him and me, I guess, safe while we're out walking. LED lights, dog collars, night safety flashing pet necklace, glow in the dark collar. I got this at auction for $4.01 with free shipping. They seem to have various different sizes and various different colors of them available. And it looks like they normally go for 5 or $6 plus another dollar shipping. Since this was an auction, uh, if you're interested, just follow the link and then copy paste uh, some of those keywords into the search bar to find it. And as is tradition around here, I saved the biggest package for last. So let's see what's in this guy. Since it came from a Canadian reshipping warehouse for whatever Chinese place I ordered it from, it doesn't say what it is on the outside. Oh, hey, wireless microphones. If that form factor looks familiar, yeah, this is probably a complete ripoff of the Rode... Uh, wireless microphone solution that a lot of YouTubers have been using lately. But of course, this is going to be the cheapest ripoff of that that I could find because, you know, I'm cheap that way. So in the box, we have a couple little dead cat fluffs to keep the wind noise down. We have three units. We have a 3.5 millimeter cable. We have a USB charging cable and a sec and another 3.5 millimeter and another USB charging cable and a couple of things. And then we have the receiver, which charges from USB, has a 3.5 millimeter output and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack output and one button on the side. Oh, cool. It's already charged. And then we have two transmitters. Oh, that's good. I, I was looking at a few different ones, and I guess I ended up with the kit that's got two transmitters in it. So I think the two transmitters should be able to transmit to this one thing, and it'll give me a stereo output uh, that I can split up later. Uh, anyway, on this one, we have a microphone input, an auxiliary input, we have a little built-in microphone. Oh, that's what these things are for. These things go onto there. Kind of click in place. Something like that. And I'm guessing that they hold the little dead cat on there to keep the wind noise to a minimum. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Good lady come off. Uh, anyway, uh, we have a charging port on the bottom, a little LED on the bottom, 
and a power button, a set button, and a volume plus and minus. I'm going to, have to take a little bit of time to go through the manual and figure out how to connect them to each other. Meanwhile, let's go and check the listing. Audio wireless lavalier microphone interview live recording clip on lapel mic. I got the double channel one. There's also a single transmitter one available. Um, and this one cost me $35 American or $46.56 Canadian. Oh yeah, there is the Rode Wireless Go system that this is basically a ripoff from. And they, well, that one's at auction right now for $192 bucks plus shipping. So if this cheap one works, great. If it doesn't, well, I didn't waste that much money on it. So what do we have down here? Features, before using this, read the steps. Connect the receiver. Press the... Da -da -da -da. Okay, so that's how you set it up. And I guess pair the transmitters and receivers together. One wireless microphone, two receivers, etc., etc. Yeah, doesn't say anything about the frequencies. I'm hoping a lot of these are operating in the 2.4 gigahertz range where uh, Wi-Fi and all the other free stuff are... Uh, you don't need a license for that. It's not interfering with anything. And I'm hoping this is what it is. I thought I looked that up. I hope I did. And if I didn't, I hope it is a legal frequency for me to use in Canada. And what does the manual say? Frequency range between 610.5 and 669.5 megahertz. Damn it, it's not the 2.2 gig that I thought it was. 2.4 gig. Oh, damn. I think I just wasted some money. So there's a few megahertz of spectrum that is allowed that this wireless microphone uses. Unfortunately, it auto scans and auto sets it, so I can't tell it what to use and what not to use. Huh. So this is not a good purchase, and I would not recommend it to anybody who lives in North America. If you are in other parts of the world, this may still be a viable option, but don't be like me. Please check your local regulations before you order anything. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. Quite a variety as always. So, I think, hope this is going to keep my dog safe. That'll be nice. These LEDs are just for tinkering with. They were so cheap I couldn't pass them up. These belts are also for tinkering with. Um... And I'm hoping I can come up with some mechanical projects that actually work. Uh, Transformers, you remember that telephone interface I got? Was it the last mailbag or the one before? Those go with that. And I think I'm waiting for one more thing. Otherwise, I'll start getting, working on tinkering on that. And then today's great disappointment, this kit, of micro, this microphone kit. Um, I'm going to see if I can return it, uh, if I'm still within the return period, and if it's not going to cost me more than it's worth to return it. If I can't return it, uh, I guess we can do a teardown on it, which will make it worthwhile. And I got some cables. I am still disappointed in myself that I didn't double check and triple check that before I ordered it. Anyway, um, that aside... The rest of this I'm all quite pleased with, and I hope you uh, found this interesting. Thanks for watching, as always. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members for helping me fund my uh, experiments and mistakes, and for helping to keep my beer fridge full, of course. Always a valuable uh, thing to do. Uh, yeah, uh, questions and comments down below, you know the drill. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you later.